Hello everyone. Here we are. We're going to read some more Psalms. So let's get started with Psalm 18. Now this one says, for the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. This is a very famous um, part here, right here. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I called to the Lord who's worthy of praise, and I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning, he routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Hallelujah, I love that phrase. He rescued me from my powerful enemy. Now for me, my powerful enemy was heroin. And this is, I'm gonna read this again because this is how I felt exactly when I got delivered from, from drugs. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. See, people think they can control drugs. They don't realize they will never compare in strength to drugs. Drugs are much stronger than people. They, come, they confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. Oh, yes, he did. He rescued me because he delighted in me, because I set my heart on him. I was utterly dependent on him. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He's rewarded me for I've kept the ways of the Lord. I'm not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I've been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord, you know, it's not hard to do, folks, if you just turn to the Lord. I mean, you're gonna sin. But the big sins, you know, the fleshy sins, those can be put down. You know, if you turn to the Lord, he'll take you from those sins. You know, uh, sexual sin, uh, drinking, you know, fleshy sins like alcoholism and drugs. The Lord will remove that stuff far from you if you just turn to him. Uh, the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. 
but to the devious you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? If it, is, if it is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure, he can do that, folks. He, he makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles don't give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I didn't turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You humbled my adversaries before me. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he didn't answer. I beat them as fine as windblown dust. I trampled them like mud in the streets. You've delivered me from the attacks of the people. You've made me the head of nations. People I did not know serve me. Foreigners cower before me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He's the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David, and to his descendants forever. Wow. Psalm 19, for the director of music, a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Okay, so he's talking about uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. He's saying they don't have any words, but they're constantly declaring his mighty works. And yes, they are. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun, S-U-N. It's like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. You know, when it rises in the morning. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making the wise simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They're more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They're sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warmed, excuse me, warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Okay, so let's do this again. Let's not forget what we're talking about. He's talking about his statutes and decrees that make the wise simple, okay? In other words, it, it makes it, it's an equalizer, okay? The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Oh, excuse me. It's, an, it's making simple people wise, okay? And that's true. We can all be wise if we know the, the word. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant. So we've 
talked about the law of the Lord, the statutes of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord, and the commands of the Lord. Okay, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure. We're not leaving out the fear. Is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. Okay, so perfect, trustworthy, right, radiant, pure, firm, and righteous. That's our God. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey. They are than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In other words, warned to stay on the path. In, in keeping them, there's great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. And we should pray this. Lord, if there's anything I'm not aware of, please forgive me and, and enlighten my eyes and help me to deal with it. Keep your servant also from willful sins. Like, you know, um, I don't know, you know, sexual sin perhaps. Um, may they not rule over me. And they don't have to, folks. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. So there we hear that all of these things, the statutes, the decrees, etc., etc., they're more precious than gold, much pure gold. They're sweeter than honey, even from the honeycomb, right from the source. They warn us. And in keeping them, we get great reward, and that is true. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 20 for the director of music, a psalm of David. May the Lord answer you when you're in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion, and we remember Zion is the holy hill where the city of David is. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. He's, he's able, folks. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Psalm 21, for the director of music, a psalm of David. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. So he's saying, me, the king, I'm rejoicing in your strength. I have great joy in the victories you've given me. You've granted him his heart's desire, he's speaking of himself, and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him, length of days forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him blend, splendor and majesty. Surely you've granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts the Lord. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. When you appear for battle, you'll burn them up as a blazing furnace. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and his fire will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. You will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with a drawn bow. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. Oh my goodness, Psalm 22, and this will be our last one. 
for the director of music to the tune of the Doe, D-O-E, in the morning, a Psalm of David. Now we don't know what song that is. We can imagine it's something beautiful. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you, now didn't Jesus say that on the cross? He quoted King David from the Old Testament, Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See how it's all the same? I don't know how to explain that revelation to you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? So Jesus was reminding the Father of this psalm by saying that. Of course, it was a real cry too, but he was reminding the Father because he didn't continue this psalm. He just said the first line of it. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you're enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. I'm getting a big message here that trust is the bottom line, right? To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I, but I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They, heard ins they hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. This is exactly what they said to Jesus. This is prophecy right here. When we get into the New Testament and we get to the crucifixion, you're going to hear that this is exactly what the people said. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. My God, this is prophetic. This is prophetic of, this is King David prophesying of the cross without knowing it. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you've been my God. Do not be far from me for trouble is near and there's no one to help. Many bulls, B-U-L-L-S, surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I'm poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. Boy, do I relate to that. God, my bones hurt. My heart was, and I swear it's from running track as a child. I literally said tonight, uh, I'm paying the price now. It's taken all my life, but I'm paying the price for all that running because I ran for years. Ugh, I am poured out like water. All my bo bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It's melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Oh my goodness, this whole psalm is prophetic. This is David praising the Lord, writing this poem down. So it will go into the Psalter, which is the book of the hymns, and here it is. This is a fulfilled prophecy. When we get to the New Testament, we're going to see this is a fulfilled prophecy because it's going to get fulfilled in the New Testament. This is a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Now, you know, for me... He's saying, all my bones are out of joint. That's what happens when you're crucified. God, at least I can say that hasn't happened. You know, running track for a few years gave me some arthritis or something, but this is hanging on a cross will put all your bones out of joint. Oh my God, this is just blowing my mind. Oh my God, okay. I'm gonna start right here. And I want you to imagine G this is Jesus' prayer coming out of King David's mouth. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It's melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. And remember Jesus asked for water and they gave him vinegar? And my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. 
Oh, the humiliation of that cross. Oh my Lord. You know, sometimes I just imagine myself holding Jesus Christ and just, you know, hugging him around the neck because I feel, you know, because it just makes me weep thinking about what he went through. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. And we know this is what happened. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You're my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life, from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. So what Jesus did on that cross was he spoke out the very first line of this, and it's probably all he could get out. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he knew that his father knew this entire cry. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. So while he was reminding God of this psalm. Here's the end of it. I'll declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I'll praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All your descendants of Jacob, all you descendants of Jacob, honor him, meaning Jews. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he hasn't despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. Oh my Lord, did he ever fulfill the call on his life. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. Sweet Jesus, he is such a sweet thing. I mean, there's no way to describe him, but his name is so precious. All the ends of the earth will remember. Yes, we will. We're remembering his death on a cross and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. Isn't that a beautiful thought? For dominion belongs to the Lord. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. Can you imagine Jesus on the cross? And this is what he's saying, because of my death, all the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that was Psalm 22. So I'm going to leave it right there, man. I got to go cry. That was unbelievable to me. And I forgot if I ever knew. You know, I've read the Bible quite a few times, but I don't know if it ever hit me like this at how prophetic this is and how it's really Jesus Christ speaking through King David. I love you very much, and I will see you tomorrow. We'll pick it up at Psalm 23. God bless you. Bye-bye.